Welcome back in to another award-winning edition of TM5's Bro Therapy with Bass and the Bear. I'm the Bear. He is Bass. Today's episode, like always, every single week, brought to you by Marine South. Go check them out if you're in the West Georgia area. Need a new boat, used boat, boat repair, whatever you need boating-wise. Buddy Clay Harden, he's got you covered at Marine South. Marine South Boat Sales and Service Center on Highway 27 in Carrollton are big supporters of high school athletics. Trust them with all your boating needs, from parts and service to purchasing a new or used boat. They have the staff and expertise to get you in the right direction. Come on in and give them a chance to show you why they are the best in the business. Marine South Premier Marine Sales Service Repair and Installation Provider. They have years of marine service experience, service all brands, makes and models of outboard motors in a timely fashion marine south on highway 27 in carrollton casey bass you've had a great week man how you doing so far what's up homie not much buddy uh considering i have a kid with pneumonia oh man still still under the weather that i'm good that's a bummer dude she hasn't been back to school you remember when she got sick yeah that's all i was saying still under the weather dude that sucks And, and it's the last week of school and so we are she's in bed right now Praying she gets to go to school tomorrow, last mm-hmm. day of school, just so she can get her yearbook signed. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. Just to say bye to her friends for the summer, like it, it's really sucks. It's the the best three weeks of school is the last three weeks. You don't do anything. They Sit go there. And build, they went to Top Golf. She watch TV. Top golf. Oh, Top Golf. Dang, dude, yeah. that's all right. It's Listen, pretty... we talked. We talked like in episode two about how they could restructure the the time with adding PE and stuff like that. Yeah. And, da, 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 da. and then we get to the end of the year and the last month of school is nonsense. <laughs> like it's just wasting time. Like, okay, so there's time that we've got that we don't I mean there's not much educational benefit to going to top golf and stars and stripes. <laughs> yeah, right? you know, like, get, I, I, there's there's get just a little not. social interaction. It's fine. I'm not trying to be a hater. Take the kids, <laughs> do whatever, have fun. However, all I'm saying is if you wanted to add in more PE time and a little bit longer lunch, it appears there's room. <laughs> well, it's it's weird. Uh, you know, we did the same thing. Uh, my oldest is in middle school, and I, you know, ninety percent of their work now is done on Chromebook. Like it's not it's not a you know paper and pencil type school anymore, or you know the education system isn't as a whole. And they took their Chromebooks. You know, they put their Chromebooks and checked them up or checked them out uh, like two weeks ago, I think. And then last week and this week, they told them not to bring their book bag. I'm like, well, if you don't have your Chromebook. And you don't have your book bag to like bring books and paper and pencil and everything. I'm like, what are you doing in school? And he was like, oh, we're just sitting there watching movies. I was like, okay. So he didn't even go to school most of this week. He went, he went on Tuesday because he had his honor roll thingy. But like, that's it. The rest of the week, he's just been bumming around the house. I'm like, uh, he's been officially sick with doctor's notes. Yes. Anybody's listening? Yeah. No. No, tru- no you know, a truancy letter. You know what? You know what? I, what? I'm glad you brought that up. Let's. I did. I didn't have this on my list. But I'm just gonna dive right into it. I like right. I like that you brought right. that up. This wasn't on my list today, but that spurred something in my head. I'm his parent, and I know you have to do this because some parents aren't responsible. I understand why it's why it's installed. If I say my son doesn't go to school, he doesn't go to school. You know what? And you can shove that truancy letter up your ass. You can save it and keep it at Carroll County. If I don't want him to go to school, he's not gonna go to school. I, I understand why they do it. I completely understand because some parents, you know. Whatever situation, I understand it, but yeah, the letter and you know, if I want my if I want my kids to stay out of school because I want to do something with them, I'm going to do it, and you can go to hell with your truancy letter and your email and everything else that you send me, uh, because whatever I do, probably better for them as an adult, as a human, than whatever they're going to learn in school that day, anyways. Yeah, I got I got very aggravated, got very very aggravated. We we te- we kept them out. I kept them out a couple times this year. I don't remember what we did, but like we we went off and and did fun stuff and like interactions and everything and oh one more you're gonna get a truancy letter well how about i light it on fire and, and throw it at you how about that there's nothing better than dad taking you out of school for just nonsense it's the best but just picking you up and it's, saying let's go yeah oh like, i remember i remember what it was the other so i i work for a, a computer company i'm a computer nerd and we have mental health days they give us uh so we had a mental health day a couple weeks ago i kept the boys out of school and we went and played golf all day we just went, we went out to St. Andrews. I let them sleep in. We went to Waffle House, grabbed some breakfast, went out to St. Andrews and played some golf. Just a round of golf outside, enjoying nature and enjoying the camaraderie of, you know, a father and a son. And, you know, we get that, we get that email. We get that letter. Oh, one, one or two more. 
or we have to send a truancy officer. Like, oh my god! Like, shut. I'd, lo- I'd love of, to. Re- I'd love to sign sign it and send it back to him. <laughs> if you have not filled your Herd County football golf team up yet, I don't think I have. I'm in, Daddy. I believe I have a spot open. I will double check that. Um, I have so many scrambles that I'm playing this year. You're it, a professional scrambler I'm, at this point. <laughs> I'm a professional donator. Um, let's see. Is that on? Is that on the fourth? The fourteenth? Is that when there? Was that when there scrambles on the fourteenth? Friday. It's a Friday. I can't remember. It's on the third or the fourteenth. Now I'm, I don't know. I'll have to. I'll have to look. But I'm. Tentative. I, I'll, I'll let you know on Tuesday for sure. Okay. But tentatively, I'm in. Um, I sent the flyer to you. Let's pull that up and let's read it. The 14th, we do still have a spot open uh, on the 14th for the Herd County Scramble if you would like to play. Um, Here's when we okay. I'll give you confirmation Tuesday afternoon. Okay, sweet. All right. We will tentatively schedule you as our fourth. Should be a fun group. It's uh it's you Ab- got Nebuchadnezzar. Ab- yep, Nebuchadnezzar and I. Nice. Um, and then one of uh one of Nebuchadnezzar's uh buddies that, that he's worked friends? with and played soccer. Well, he has a couple. He's got Josiah? one or two. Is his name Josiah? I tell you, he's got more friends than I do. His friend group is huge. That's it. He he always tries to plan these outings and stuff and you know, people that know me know that I'm not a terribly sociable person. I'm not, you know, I'm friendly, I'd be very friendly to you, but I'm not, I'm not a social butterfly, if you will. That's my wife. My wife is the social butterfly. I'm more of a recluse. By the way, I saw the picture she posted of you two from like, oh, nine. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Who was that? Who were those people? <laughs> oh, dude, that was, yeah. Yeah, you were was, a little you were a little skinny fat joker, weren't you? So so we were so at that point in my life, um now I was you're just a Sasquatch. I was running about 10 miles a day. Uh yeah. I'd wake up at 4 a.m. and run. Uh and the older the kids got and the more my calendar filled up, I'm lucky to get a three mile run in, in the middle of the day. We were yeah, we were uh there was like a good like three to four years there uh where Emily and I were like super health conscious. Like I was eating a bunch of tofu and you know, stuff. and dude, it just got to be so much. It it's it's more of a convenience to be fat and be unhealthy, and it, it sucks that that's sort of the the norm. But like, it's expensive to eat healthy. You got to go out of your way. You have to consciously go out of your way and do it. And we're so damn busy, dude. It just it's it's well, tough to do it. What you've done is what I've done. You've got to find your healthy fat. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. Like you. Yeah. Like I'm 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 overweight. Yeah. I'm perfectly happy. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I'm at a weight now where I can bust butt, lose 10 pounds, and go to the beach and feel good about myself. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But I'm not because I've lost a lot of weight. I mm-hmm. was obese. Mm-hmm. Um, I was huge. And and I see pictures of myself and don't even recognize who I like. <laughs> That's I mean, your Facebook that your Facebook picture. It looks nothing like you now, man. Right. Like I was huge, huge, huge human being. Um and but now I've gotten to a point where this is my weight. Like this is, I've, I've been doing experiments. This is as big as I get. Yeah. Like I, I I'm I can't get bigger than this. So that's good. Like my activity level, my my testosterone level, mo- most importantly. Yep. Um, the, the way that I eat, which I don't eat bad, um, don't eat a lot of fast food, cook a lot. Um, honestly, if I cut the sugared drinks out of my diet in three weeks i'd probably lose the 10 pounds i'm talking about um <laughs> but we're, we're we're at a healthy yeah, fat weight we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're overweight but Athle- we're not athletically gross. chunky we're not gonna have a heart attack tomorrow no. and, and it's and it's the like the dad bod right like yeah. we're in the, that dad bod area yep. you got fat dad and then you got dad bod yep. we're in dad bod area and i'm perfectly okay with that yep. i don't need a six pack never had one and i've made it this far so i'm good it takes too much effort <laughs> we don't have time for that i gotta be dad like i got i got, I got things to do that's I mean, right last night um, just some inside baseball is having a really good day, having a little celebration with the fam. Mm-hmm. And, and just, you know, we talk a lot about drinking on the show just to show I don't drink much at all. So I was three and a half beers in last night. Have an A-ball. <laughs> I sent you a picture. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. And I was, I was having a dance party in the kitchen. Now my kid has a partially collapsed lung. So she's participating in the dance party because she feels great. It's the first time in two weeks she had to have a fever. That's good. And then as soon as we think she's done, we find out she's got a partially collapsed lung. <sighs> so she can't really dance. Right. So she's yeah. Sitting on the table, giving me I, this while I dance can't... around the, the kitchen. I'd rather do that than sit ups. 
Like that's <laughs> that's to me that's more fun, and it's got a better. <laughs> You got a longer lasting effect. She'll she won't remember dad doing sit ups in the basement, but she'll remember dad dancing around like an idiot with the it's good uh, cardio sunglasses. You can put the picture in if you want to with the sunglasses and his hat backwards. Oh, oh, um, the picture's definitely going in. Yeah, yeah, dancing yeah. dancing around like that was a lot of fun. Like we were having a big time. The wife was having a mimosa. Like we were we were having a big family go. party. It, was, it was it was family time. It was great, you know. And so I'd rather do that than. Than do than 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 be lifting all the time, which we lift. Yeah, I got a gym in the basement. You lift. You mm -hmm. run still a lot every day, almost right. Yep, yep, just about every but, day. But you, but you can't do ten miles. No, right? I don't like have you, the time. I don't have the time, yeah, and yeah, just don't don't have the. I love I love running, man. I, I'll tell anybody that's um, that's suffering. This is bro therapy, so we'll get real. Anybody that's like suffering from depression or suicidal thoughts or anything like that. Man, the number one thing that I always recommend to people is exercise. Anything, absolutely any any type of exercise, and try to do it outside. Whether it's going for a hike, you don't have to run. Just go for, go for a walk. Enjoy the sun. I think there's a lot of a lot of mental endorphins and stuff that get released in your body when you're outside, when you're in nature, and you're, and you're working out a little bit. You don't have to go out there and run run a marathon or something, but go do a light jog, a little run, go out in nature, enjoy it, man. I think it does a lot for, for mental health. I am always in a better mood in, in days that I, I can't run. Like I hate rainy days. I hate when it rains. I hate when it's cold. Cause I don't, I can't go out and, and run. I mean, I, I used to, I used to, when I was a, a freak and running in every single sort of weather. Um, but when it's, when it's nice, when it's pretty, when, it, when I go for a run, you just feel better. You feel healthier. You feel happier, man. That's why that's why I'm a big summer dude. I'm a big fan yeah. of summer. Like I'm a, I'm a huge you're, summer. You guy. got the summer flow going right now. I just want <laughs> you to know your, your hair is always a little bit different. But yeah. today you've kind of got the the rooster deal going. Yep. And when you get to ranting, it's kind of flopping. I'm really digging <laughs> it. If you guys are listening, you should check it out on YouTube. He's got the the Hawaiian shirt on, sunglasses, and the floppy the floppy we're, flow. We're gonna, but I'm with you. I agree completely. I suffer from depression. Yeah, it's like seasonal um, depression. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I suffer with depression, depression. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 I'm, see a psychiatrist, I see a therapist, and I, and I, and I, you know, work to deal with it. And the last few months have been really difficult on me. Mm -hmm. And one of the only ways I've made it through has been that gym in the basement, and getting out in the yard and working and and sweating. Mm -hmm. And and whenever I get to feeling really down, I just really have one trigger that just says, "Get your butt to the basement." Mm -hmm. Like, just go hit the bag, go push some weight. Go do some push-ups. Go throw the medicine ball around. Like and 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 it drags me out of it better than any Wellbutrin, better than any kind of you know therapy. Mm -hmm. The 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 act of working out is is it's a magic it's a magic pill. Yep. Like it, yep. it's a pill that's been here since we were created. Yep. It's yep. it's it's the it is the antidepressant that nature has put in our body mm -hmm. is is to work out. And so I'm with you a thousand a thousand percent yep. if you're struggling which hey i'm always struggling the, the more the more effervescent people are in public generally yeah when when there's nobody else around our brains kind of kick our butt yeah and so you know it's a constant battle and there's nothing wrong with it yeah sure I, I, I didn't we're do all anything. going through stuff i didn't do anything to bring that on it's just what's in my brain right and so you you learn how to deal with it and you learn how to handle it and you learn how to lift and work out and and run and i can't really run much anymore because of my knees but i, I walk mm -hmm. I swim well i swim a lot my, like i swam three times yesterday run slow what? i said i i run it's more yeah. of a more of a quick jog i would say little <laughs> hey little shuffle hey little big shuffle. man shuffle baby getting long getting as you're moving yeah yep long hey, as you're moving as, as long as, as i moving. stay around 11 minute miles pretty good just keep on shuffling so, baby so i'm in a great mood and and I, I'm I'm really struggling with what to bitch about. Oh, that's good. That's um, a good problem to have, man. Yeah, I got my list. So I just have some concerns. I, I just want to hit, and then yeah, I really got some happy things I want to talk about with you. All right. Um, uh, something that came out of the kitchen party last night that <laughs> made yesterday maybe my favorite day that's ever happened to me. <laughs> we'll get to in a minute. Um, but. I saw where the National Football League is going to be experimenting in the preseason with doing away with the yard markers, with the chains. I did not see that. Going to lasers. Now, 
the technology is obviously there. Uh, you know, we've talked about it. You can tell if you put a chip on the football, you can tell exactly where it is. You for sure. Can tell, da, 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 da. And I love technology and I love that the National Football League is continuously trying to do things, especially you know, when we're talking about professional sports. The mm -hmm. one place it needs to happen the most, where I think it probably happens next two years, mm -hmm. is the strike zone in Major League Baseball. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I'm all in on that. Yeah. But I'm struggling with this one, Bryce. I love the chains. I, I'm a Georgia Southern University guy. When when when, the, when, the, when we get a first down, it's move those chains, yeah. move those yeah. chains, move those chains, move those chains. Well, if there's no chains, what's our chant? Recalibrate the laser, recalibrate the laser, <laughs> recalibrate the laser. Like, Let's, I, go I, I Let's go, computer. Let's go, computer. Maybe this is old guy. No. Like, rrr, rrr, rrr. Nope. But I don't understand that. And your boy, your boy AJ Hawk was saying he liked it because. There's a lot of injuries that come from the yard markers and people not paying attention. I've been around football a long time. I don't, I can't think of one. I've, I've seen it a couple times. I can probably count on one hand how many times I've seen it. And I've only seen like maybe one serious injury. But listen, AJ Hawk is this dude's this. He, he's an Ohio folk. All right. You know, he, he what does that mean? Well, he's, he's one of those Ohio folks. Just a little enunciation on the folk. Just, you know, kind of an odd dude. I mean, th this guy this guy ended Kirk Herbstreet's career. They're playing in an alumni game, and Kirk Herbstreet's out there, alumni game, having fun. You know, he's adult. He's already graduated. A.J. Hawks in high school trying to make a name from him. Just just goes head right into into Kirk Herbstreet and near, pretty much ends his career. Sends him into an early retirement. The guy drives with two feet. I mean, he's not he's not an F1 driver. He's driving with two feet. Right foot, left foot. Guy falls asleep during the golden hour when he's driving. It sometimes he forgets trips that he takes. So you know, this is your guy. This hey, this is my. I'm a bit. Hey, right here. Let's see. Well, hold on, hold on. Right yeah, over he's up there somewhere. Right over. How am I doing? Right here. That's an AJ Hawk. That's too much effort. Over That's here is an AJ Hawk, and I guess my boys took. I have a I have a football down here at a screen sign from him, and I got a I got a uh, I got a cereal box sign from him too. I love AJ Hawk, big AJ Hawk fan, favorite Buckeye of all time. I'd probably Someone not the dude play. I'd be taking advice from. You know, <laughs> just dude could play yeah. man. But Zero, when you play like that he, at that position, yeah, a leading leading tackler in Green Bay Packer history. Zero confirmed concussions. Okay, pal. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, not not the guy that I'd probably take advice from. I don't like it. It would be like them removing the start finish line from a NASCAR race. And you're gonna have to, you know, keep them out there though. You have to have something for the people in the stands to know. Maybe it's just a dude in a like a bright green outfit. A tall they're dude. Gonna, like a seven we're foot dude. No, because they're doing it this year in preseason. Is the laser only on TV or is it gonna be on the field too? Well, I mean, I don't think you can see the laser. I just think that it's and laser may be the wrong term. Again, I'm getting this from McAfee and, and AJ Hall. Um <laughs> that's not a shot. <laughs> we love them so I do. much. Oh, yeah. I but love just like when you watch us, yeah, and I'm telling you that Dante Culpepper was a Eagles quarterback and I meant Randall Cunningham, you gotta take everything we say with a grain of salt. We're just talking shit. That's all those two are doing too. So like we're not I'm not taking a shot at AJ and McAfee. I'm just saying, right, right. I yeah, I could I, be wrong. I can't, like they, I can't endorse that. I like, I like using it as something to help with the chains. But you gotta have the chains, man. It's it's right. like, like I said, it'd be like it'd be like removing the start finish line from a NASCAR race. Like you can't, no, no, they don't use the start finish line as the start finish line anymore. Like it's it's all laser. It's all laser done. I don't it, understand how you if you don't have chains out there. I don't know how I call a game. Yeah, I don't. I don't either. I, like, I, yeah, like, really like you important. said, how do people in in the stands see where the first down's going to be? Right. Like, I'm, I'm, there's there's got to be a yard marker. Maybe yeah. they just go with. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Got chains, steel, 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 what was that? steel. Georgia? They steel Maybe got, got chains, steel, and yeah. the laser is there to back it up. Because here's the thing. The, I don't know how many natural surface fields are in the national football league anymore green bay i think it's about half billy and i actually went through this on tm5 the other day and i think it's about 50 50 right now so on grass which is way more than high school 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Probably percentage-wise. Like yeah, in high school, we don't have any grass fields around here. Zero. None. And so you, you don't see any measurements because everything's drawn on the field perfectly. So you just kind of look. Yeah. You, you may see one measurement every three or four games. Uh, yeah. To the I'm, point, to I'm the trying point to remember. that it's, it's really become a detriment to people who coach like me. I don't know if you were listening to the spring game the other night. Yeah. But there was a time that as a coach, I'm watching it. It's getting down towards the goal line at the end of the at the end of the half, and I and they got close to a first down. Uh, I think it was VR got close to a first down. And my immediate thing was I'd ask for a measurement, for a measurement yeah. right now, just to stop the clock. Sure, so that I could get my guys to the line of scrimmage. It's one of those coaching deals yeah. that you can manipulate the football. Game. Right, we, you, they just they'll tell you no. Like they're just no, we're not measuring. No, we're not like measuring. It's first, it's a first down. Sorry, Pat. So it it, it takes away from the game so what i'm hoping it is 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 like major league baseball where it is a backup that i would i would like that yeah i would like that yeah. for sure yeah. Goal line did the ball cross the goal line at the bottom of the pile mm-hmm. right like I, that's stuff that i'm like yeah we, we can put rfdi or whatever you call it chips in the two tips of the football i've always been in favor of that for sure you you should and, and know jump. You should know via computer at all times where exactly every point of that football is. Like, if yeah. it's under a pile, put a damn chip in the thing. You can figure it out where it's at. You can't tell where the knee went down. You can't tell those kind of things, obviously. Yeah. But but it, it's another point of information that can help you get the call right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and 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 so anyway, that's that's a concern. Yep. I'm just I want to see how that plays out because like I love the new kickoff rule. I'm excited about the new kickoff rule. I can't I wait to it. watch that. Yep, I'm with you on that one. Um, so, you know, I'm not a don't change things old man. Um, and at the same time, I am an old don't change things old man. I I, I, I can go both directions, um, but it's a little bit of a concern. For me. No, I don't. I don't about bl- as worked up as I can get today. I, I yeah, like I like it. Um, <laughs> I I'm sort of with you. I like I like a mixture of old school and new school. And if we have new school technology that can help some of the old school stuff that's already there, leave the old school stuff there just for pomp and circumstance. Or it's, you know, like I said, it's like, it's like the dude that waves the flag at NASCAR races. We don't need that anymore, but it's always been there. You know, it's always like the start finish line. So I'm with you. I like the idea, but I still like the chains being there 24 seven. I think they kind of have to be. Yeah. I I think you, you can't, there's no lines. Like you can't see the first down line that you see on TV when you're in person. It's it's not there. Well, you have to have chains unless, to know where the ball <laughs> spotted, what down it is, and where the first down line is. Unless you're my wife at her very first football game that she ever went to. Please share. Uh, she thought somebody came out on the field and put those lines on there that were on the TV. My wife is ridiculously clear <laughs> about on-screen graphics. She will tell you very quickly whether or not she likes a broadcast. Um, she doesn't care. Yeah, yeah. But if she's going to watch a game with me, she wants to know. Yeah. She wants to see it on the screen so she can understand. That's the first down line. And she'll say, what's that red line? What's that yellow line? Yeah. Well, that's the red zone. That's the field goal range line. And she's like, oh, that's stupid. They should take that one off of there. Because she doesn't need that. Yeah, yeah. She, she wants to know where's the first down. And then when they put the deal on the where it says the down and distance, like on an arrow, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, which yeah. way the ball's going. Yep. Like that's important. Like for me and you, that doesn't matter. I, yeah. I don't even notice it yeah. but for my wife. She notices it and it makes her viewing better. And so I'm a big proponent of that golf. I really like when I'm watching professional golf and every shot, they've got a tracer Tracer. I love the tracer, man. You can't see the ball. No, no. It's, it's like just, hockey. The I tracer, can't see the, puck see the half the time. It shows me the swing speed. It yep. shows me the spin rate. That's great. That's good viewing. Yeah. So I, I, I'm down with that. And, I tell you, and I, I, you know what, I, what Emily? <laughs> maybe maybe the NFL's figured out how to do it. You may be. This may be the best thing that's ever happened to you, Emily Sparling. What what I don't want in golf though is I don't want them popping up what club they use because that it just makes me that's, depressed. That's stupid. <laughs> okay, here we go. I got one. Okay. I can write this down. Okay. <laughs> I have a change that needs to be made to professional golf. Oh, hit me other than the other than the electronic scoring. Th- that's a no brainer. Okay. That's just stupidity. With you on that one. Yes. This isn't really stupidity. Okay. This is just it shit's getting out of hand. Okay. The PGA was one at 21 under par. It's absurd, dude. That's not fun. No. That's nope. that's that's the John Deere imitation. Bingo. That's 
That's not a major. That's the waste management open. And 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 here's why. Your son's been playing baseball for a while. Mm-hmm. You know, had a big long season. Mm-hmm. It's over now. Uh, no, all stars. We're starting all stars. Okay, so you had your championship deal, and now you're in all stars. Mm-hmm. I can't keep up. Yep, yep. We you did, did our- it the right way. Yep. You, you guys have played in a league. Yep. And yep. then you have an all star team from the league. Yes. And then you play in a tournament mm-hmm. to yep. figure out who's the champion of the All Star. That's yep. the way baseball should be. But yep. I'm not going to go travel ball. Okay. <laughs> Your boys hit with baseball aluminum bat. bats. Yes. Yeah. 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 University of Georgia hits with aluminum bats. Aluminum bat. Right. Yeah. Ronald Acuna Jr. hits with a wooden bat. A wooden bat. Right. They need to roll back technology on professional golfers. They got to roll back the technology on the clubs, and they got to roll back the technology on the balls. Leave it alone for all the amateurs. Bingo. And the pros Bingo. have to play with bolotas or something else. They've got to play with persimmon clubs. We have got to back them up 10 years. If you just back their technology up 10 years with the grooves, I'm not smart enough to know what that means. But I understand the, 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 the different kinds of balls that they can use are a huge deal with the different spin controls. Yep. The the different grooves, which they did dumb down the grooves several years ago on the wedges, but that's obviously not been enough. And dudes hitting six irons, 235 yards. It's crazy. Like, you, you can't, you have to roll it back. Bryson DeChambeau, in his prime, does not hit the golf ball farther than John Daly in his prime. With the same equipment. Same technology. It's technology. Yeah. Now, yeah. he's still a bomber. I'm yeah. not saying he's not, but the technology is overtaking the courses. Plus, because all the training, the golfers are getting bigger, stronger, faster, For sure. looser, better training techniques, better training tools, and, and the technology is killing the game at that level. It's, I don't want to watch that. Yeah. It's, it's a birdie, 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 I think birdie, it, birdie. I Hit think it up, jackass. It has more to do with the way the course was set up. I don't think it was set up hard enough because look at Augusta. Like, you, you'll see you'll see negative 20s at Augusta twice, I think, in the history of the history of Augusta National because it's set up hard. I don't think I don't think Valhalla was set up hard enough. I mean, I know they tried to to get the the um, the Louisville PD to help them with how tough the course was. But I think the greenskeeper need to do a little bit better job of of making the greens faster, changing the undulations in the offseason, making the the bunkers uh, softer or deeper, making the, the, the second cut higher. I think a lot of that has to go back on the greenskeepers not making the course hard enough and not having enough ingenuity in the way you have to attack greens because, you know, you look at you look at Masters. When you attack greens, a yard or two off, and that's a bogey double bogey hole. Uh, when you were at the PGA Championship this weekend, if you attack the greens in the incorrect way, well, you can run off here. There's runoff here. You can be saved here. And save par, save birdie. I think the greenskeepers need to do a better job of – making the greens unattackable or, or punishing people that miss greens, um, you know, to the left a little bit, just a couple yards. I think, Justin th- Thomas, I think they need to be harder. Justin Thomas made a statement that I thought was one of the most accurate things ever. He goes, it's all about the greens. Yeah. These greens are soft. Yeah. If you give us soft greens, we're going to kill you. Yeah, absolutely. We, 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 if you give us soft greens that receive our ball, yep. it's over. Yep. You, you, you lose. Yep. Like we are going to destroy your golf course. Because we can hit our spot. Yeah. We can hit the golf ball where we want to hit the golf ball every time. And soft greens, every if you time. don't, if you if you miss your spot by a little bit, soft greens, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't punish you. Right. But and but with a but with a, a 230-yard iron, yeah. you're stopped. Again, something to do with the green, but it's got a lot to do with the golf ball and the golf club. Well, the ball. You're in a 230-yard iron that's taking one hop and stopping. Yeah. Balls that's are getting, not that. That the physics isn't physics. Like that, that's not the way it works. Balls are getting like rolled you, back, you know? Yeah, they're biting. Yeah, on a 245 no, 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 no. yard three iron. Te- technology. The PGA tour passed it last year. Passed the oh, did they? Yeah, so they it's roll um, back more. Play with marshmallows. Yeah, they're they're rolling it back. It hasn't started yet. I think it's I think it starts in like twenty twenty six or twenty twenty seven. Uh but they they said they're trying to roll back the ball at least twenty yards. For the pros. Do not do that for us. Everybody. That's the difference. Everybody. Do not 
dumb down our stuff, which is, that's not the PGA's job, right? That's right. Titleist can just be like, yeah, I mean, that's what will happen. But I need, I want to hit my ball farther. You know, I want to get close to what they're so, doing. I, it's fun to hit the ball a long way. They're going to hit the ball a long way no matter what they play with right, an apple. Right, yeah, yeah. I got a, I got a business proposition for you. Let's do it. So these these Pro V ones aren't going to be available in about eight to ten years. So I say we stock up on those bad boys and just get a closet full of them and then sell them at an exorbitant amount in ten to fifteen years. You think we can get one hundred and fifty a box for a Pro V one X? Probably in ten years. If if they if the PGA Tour or it's not the PGA Tour, it's the USGA. If the USGA keeps up with what they're telling ball manufacturers that. They cannot produce balls. They have to roll all their ball technology back so it doesn't fly as far. For every single ball they produce, whether it's amateurs or PGA Tour guys, yeah, absolutely. I don't, think, it's pretty, I don't think that's a thing. That's what the, the USGA, USGA that, doesn't have any control over Titleist. Ah, they have control over their players and what is allowed in their tournaments. Yeah. And let me tell you something. About 8% of golfers play in maybe not even that high. I'd, I'd say less than 5% of golfers Play in USGA events. Oh, where it matters. Uh, yeah, I didn't even. It might even be lower than five. A club championship. Yeah, at Oak Mountain is is not gonna play your Pro V one. You're fine. Yeah, we, we don't care what golf well, ball. We're not checking not golf balls. Not at Oak We're Mountain. Not, you fourteen. I clubs. wouldn't fly at Oak Mountain. Yeah, well, maybe it'll, maybe a bad example, <laughs> but. <laughs> I just made that guy my nemesis. I don't even know his name. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know his name either. I'm just creating him. All my nemesis is in the world are, are, are like my best friends now. And so I got to come up with new nemesis. So the pro Nemesis, whose name I just, I will learn and never say, um, he's my new nemesis, but you know, they'll, they'll, it's about selling golf balls. Titleist will keep making the pro V one. They're, they're, they have to keep making the pro V one because the scratch golfer whose biggest tournament of the year is the club championship is going to play that pro V one. They're going to keep buying that golf ball. Let me let me give um, you a scenario. What they'll probably have is like a Pro V one P, that would, or a Pro V one A, Pro V one Amateur, or something like that. Like, well, yeah, no, I see Pro V one Professional. You got way more golf balls sold to amateurs than pros. So oh, you don't need to change percent. the marketing to the amateurs. You leave that the same. You change the marketing to the USGA guys, or you, you, that's it. Uh, 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 Pro V one U for USGA approved ball. Something like that. That's what'll happen. What? Guess where this herd county scrambles at? It's an Oak Mountain. I know where it's at. <laughs> I got, but the good news is I've got a herd county collared shirt, baby. It'll oh, be summertime. Hey, so do so I. No hoodie. Uh, you know what? Shane gave me this. I wonder. I wonder what size it is. I think I can still wear it. Um, uh, yeah, halter top. I, I, no halter top. Ooh, cut off. Yeah. Yes. Um, what What I was thinking is I'll give you two scenarios. Uh, scenario one. The USGA tells Titleist they have to roll their stuff back. Titleist tells them to go to hell. They're not doing it. They'll do it just for the pros, but they'll come out with an amateur, amateur ball. I wonder if the USGA, I don't think they'd ever do this because it'd be suicide, but I wonder if the USGA has the power to ban Titleist balls from USGA competition. Heck no. You don't think they, you don't think they have that power? I don't no. think they do it, but... No. I, I, golf is getting goofy, man. Professional well, golf they, is getting goofy. If, if, if they didn't make the changes... Yeah. For their guys. For the pro guys. But listen, the Titleist irons that they're playing at the tour are not the same Titleist irons we're buying. They're made to spec. Oh, yeah. For each the dude. shafts. Like, that That's the biggest thing is the shafts are insane. They're, they're more expensive than the irons are. Like, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a very finite amount of golf ball we're talking about. Here. How many guys, like, if, if, they make a, if they make a Pro V1 professional and a Pro V1 amateur, the amateur flies 20 yards further, how many guys, how many weekend hackers or do you think are going to go buy the Pro V1 professionals because they want to play with what the professionals play? Too many. And if yeah, I was still in charge of the golf course, I'd outlaw that golf ball. <laughs> That'd be what I'd do because what's going to happen is going to be those guys who play the tips yeah. who are eight handicaps and they play the tips and now they're going to play a shorter ball with less spin and continue to get slower and slower and slower. <laughs> that That's the idiots that's going to Play that. You're yeah. absolutely right. They're yeah. going to pay $20 a dozen more <laughs> for a, crappier for a ball. crappy golf ball. <laughs> so I would ban that golf ball. Here I am saying they need to make them and yeah. make those guys play with them. Yeah. But at the standard Joe course, they, don't, need, they don't belong. Don't even sell you them. Wanna, don't even sell them there. chip and putt with it. Yeah. And you, you want to practice and chip and putt and do whatever. You're already hitting with them on the range. Those things are marshmallows. So you're, you're already <laughs> doing okay there. You do not play that golf ball. On the, on the course. You're talking I mean, about 
It's like a top flight. Like you're basically playing a top hey, flight from the tips. Hey, have you tried the new top flights? Top flight Guys, is com- top flight is completely of my golf is with you. <laughs> All right, so you know what I play. I'll, I'll I play bring whatever's I'll, in my bag. Or I'll, I'll get some. I'll get some top flights for the next time we play golf. They have, they have completely redesigned everything. Top golf is our top flight is completely redesigned everything, uh, and they're a pretty good medium ball now. Like I would I would equate them to like a um. Uh, like a Callaway Super Soft. I think they're very equitable to a Callaway Super Soft. Pretty good medium price point ball now. I need to give, I need to cash up Nebuchadnezzar and get him to get me a couple dozen Kirklands. Yeah. That's the, that's the play. Kirkland, yeah. Yeah. Those Kirklands are, Pro are good V's. balls. Yeah. They're the Pro V's. That's all, all of Kirkland Pro stuff with is diff- different letters. It, it's all Titleist. It's all Titleist stuff just with, with different. Um, they're like 25 bucks a dozen. I forgot my uh, I forgot what I was about to I was about to fall. Oh, uh, nope, no, I don't remember. Oh, uh, you know, not now I remember. You talk about playing it from the tips. I played it from the first time from the tips this past weekend. How'd you do? Um, we did pretty good. Nebuchadnezzar and I played in a two man scramble and we shot six over um, at at Woodland Hills from the tips. I was very. Was uh, it's up in uh, Cartersville, just south of Cartersville. There's pretty a lot nice. of golf courses around the Cartersville area. Yeah, yeah, pretty nice little course. Um, not terribly long. Uh, but we played from the tips, and we we shot. We went through the first seven. I think we were one under, um, and then had a little bit of like a four or five spell where we just couldn't couldn't find it. Get, couple couldn't find the fairway. Yeah. You two every once in a while kind of get yeah, couple bogeys, a few bogeys, yeah. um, and then and then we kind of got back on the uh, the par birdie train towards towards the latter half of the the eighteen holes, and yeah, we shot six over. From the tips, uh, so I was it's great. I was very very excited about awesome that. Awesome for you too. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Very. I think we finished in second uh, in our in, in our little two man scramble group that we were doing. Um, nice. So yeah, I was I was I was fairly happy about that. Um, you should be. Marine South Boat Sales and Service Center on Highway 27 in Carrollton are big supporters of high school athletics. Trust them with all your boating needs, from parts and service to purchasing a new or used boat. They have the staff and expertise to get you in the right direction. Come on in and give them a chance to show you why they are the best in the business. Marine South Premier Marine Sales Service Repair and Installation Provider. They have years of marine service experience. Service all brands, makes, and models of outboard motors in a timely fashion marine south on highway 27 in carrollton yeah so i uh, all right my my i only only had one rant other than the truancy thing that just sort of popped up i only had one rant for this week um and last week uh no nascar talk this week nascar talk back my rant once again is on nascar this week absolutely it is absolutely um I, I called a, this. I, I called this a couple weeks yes. ago. Remember, I said that you, you put a ring ca- in, and that's, in pit as, row. as soon as I, as soon as I was watching, I was like, Man, "Casey Bass called this. I'll see Bass <laughs> called it." Um, so this past weekend was the All Star race. It doesn't really mean anything, but it's just for a million bucks. Winner gets a million bucks. Everybody else goes home a loser. Uh, if you finish first, you win. If you finish second, anywhere else, you lose. You don't get anything. You get, I like that. You get that's, that's you cool get gimmick. nothing. Um, so yes yeah. or no? Do you like that? I do. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, it's good gimmick. Yep. Yeah, it's it's the all star race. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't mean anything. Second um, place is the first loser, right? Bingo. Yep. If yeah. You ain't, if you ain't first, you're last. So you they're ha- last. they're having it at North Wilkesboro. North Wilkesboro is a very old track. It's the first track that I ever went to as a little kid to see a NASCAR track live. It holds a lot of sentimental value to a lot of hardcore NASCAR fans. I love it. Uh, short track package, not great right now for NASCAR, but it is what it is. We can uh, we'll go on a rant with that, you know, some other day. But it's fine. Good track, great atmosphere. They've done an amazing job. Can't say anything uh, other than positive stuff about the all-star race, where they're having it, what they've done production-wise um, from there. So North Wilkesboro, very old track. You can't exit that track while there's a race going on. There's no tunnel. Uh, there's no bridge. There's no nothing. So if when you're in the infield and a race is going on, you're in the infield until that race is over. Um, Ricky, Stenhouse, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. got spun out on lap two by Kyle Busch. I, I think Kyle thought Ricky squeezed him coming out of a turn. It that is not what happened. Nope, not what happened at all. Kyle Busch got mad, and he Kyle thought Bush Ricky. Bitch. He, he thought he thought Ricky squeezed him. Ricky didn't squeeze him, but Kyle nope. Busch thought he did. And Kyle Busch came in the next uh, next turn and spun Ricky and ended his day. On lap he two, ran him into the wall. Oh he, yeah, he, he persistently spun yep. him. He yep. kept going until he got it done. Absolutely on purpose. Absolutely on purpose. Uh, so, so Ricky Stenhouse parks his car right in front of KB's pit stall, 
gets out, gets an interview, and says, uh, I'm going to have Richard hold my watch when he's done. And damn it, if he's not a man of his word. Race gets Wait over. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't know that part. I'm up to date on this. Yeah. Because I love fighting. Yeah. He said, Yep. I'm giving Richard Childress my watch. I think you I think he was talking about his dad. I think he was talking okay. about Ricky Stenhouse Sr., his watch. He said, I'm giving my daddy my watch. Yep. I'm gonna give you some inside baseball. <laughs> and then I'm gonna let you finish. <laughs> Me and Jason Reeves. Yeah. We've talked about Reeves. Right. Uh tennis ball, penny shooting. Yeah. Right. If we are ever in a crowded space anywhere, I, in fact, I, I have a collection of watches. I only wear a watch 98% of the time when I'm going out with Jason Reeves because that's our symbol. <laughs> Taking the watch off? If you're watching your boy, because you've seen me, when I'm talking, I can look like I'm mad and I'm yeah. just telling a story. Right, just animated. If that happens, the <laughs> other one is coming. That's the trigger? That's the that that means it's on. That, and the chances are, are if I was to take my watch off, whoever I'm t- talking to is about to get hit <laughs> by not me. Like he's just going what? <laughs> Come over the top. He's not even ask what's going on. So yeah, so that's awesome. Yep, I'm yep. a big, even bigger Ricky Stanhouse yep. fan now. So he said he said I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Rick hold my watch. And I'm assuming I don't think he was talking about Richard Childress. I think he was talking about his dad. Uh, I hope so. I want yeah, to be his dad. I think he was I'm talking about his, his dad. dad. Um, so there's a picture of him, of Ricky Stenhouse waiting right there for Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch is walking there. Uh, you get the video heated exchange, yada, yada, yada. Ricky throws a right one. It, you got to look at a couple angles. Ricky caught it clean. Ricky Stenhouse yeah. Jr. Caught it clean. You got to look at a couple angles, a big, you know, a big to do happen, screaming, pushing, shoving, yelling. Stenhouse's dad jumps in and. He's got a hold of KB, and the and the the crews get in, and they're pushing and shoving and throwing. It's NASCAR. It's NASCAR's roots. It's great. It's fantastic. I I, I know some of the reporters were were getting in the way and and, and sort of caught some side blows. The the picture that's on them. That's what I said too. Bob Pockris, The picture of Bob Pockris as he's fallen over is hilarious. Um, but it's it's great. It's good for NASCAR. The heated exchange. Everything. I love it. And NASCAR takes the video and posts it everywhere, all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, wherever NASCAR is. Buddy, they're posting the video here, there, everywhere. Publicity, front page. It's on Pat McAfee. It's on ESPN. It's all over everybody's lips. And then what does NASCAR do? They find them. (laughs) $75,000. They find them and suspend (laughs) Some of KB's crew, some of Ricky Stenhouse's crew, two games, four games. The hypocrisy knows no bounds. It it's knows no bounds. Ridiculous. Do I agree Ricky Stenhouse Jr. should be punished? Yes. You no. have you have to punish that in some way or form. No. You Rice, have to. Listen be, to me. Because then it turns into a, a, a free for all. How many conversations have we had about we've had almost every week? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I've made it clear. I don't watch it. Yeah. I can tell you what happened. Yeah, in that race. Yeah, I, I, I've watched it. I know the 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 moment that 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 Kyle Busch got upset about. Yep, which he is way out of line. It was yep. good racing. It was clean racing. I know the moment he spun him out, and then I watched the fight. Yep, that is the most NASCAR I have watched in five years. <laughs> I'm angry because Ricky Stenhouse had the high ground and he gave it up. Yep, rule number one: don't yep. do that. Yeah, and they broke it up too fast. Yeah, let them fight. Yeah, if you if you. You want to know how you end grown men fighting? Back up. Yeah, it, it'll it'll get it'll Kyle get done Bush real quick. Ain't starting a fight if he knows nobody's gonna break it up. Yeah, he's not gonna do it. We're too old. Yeah, we are too old for a fight to the death fight on pit row. Let them go. <laughs> Back up. Uh, Y'all want to go? Have at it. Yep. Build a circle. Go for Let's it. Go. Have at it. It. They'll be one every ten years. They won't do it. It's just like the kids in school who were talking trash, talking trash, talking trash, and wait till there's just enough people to break it up to throw a punch. Oh. And all you got to do is get the first punch in, and you're pulled apart, and it's over with. It, no, it, that's nonsense. If you're going if you're gonna be about it, be about it. It Let wouldn't happen fight. a lot unless your name's Austin Hill. Yeah, Austin. But, uh, you ever seen Austin Hill? Yeah. So most NASCAR drivers, they're little bitty guys, five, five, eight, five, ten. Yeah. You know, small. Austin Hill, be about six three, two fifty. The dude's a Don't, unit. Dude, and, and you, you know what? You know where nobody he's from? Ever, nobody ever raced him hard. You know where he's from? Where? Right here, baby. He's a Georgia boy. It, it, not only is it Georgia boy, Douglasville, Georgia. 
We got the biggest redneck? Alexander High School. My wife graduated from Alexander High School. Yes, sir. We've got the big we've got the biggest redneck in Ashcroft. Oh, uh probably. Yeah. I'd say Austin nice. Austin Hill, probably the biggest redneck. I, Ross Chastain's pretty close. He, he so, comes from a long list of watermelon farmers. So you're telling me, oh, by the way, watermelon, that is on my list. We'll come back. Okay. You're telling me that what I'm proposing, mm -hmm. the only downside to it is that our homeboy Dang right. would clear house. That's right. Oh, I'm doubling down. So, 10 so, out of 10, this is what needs to happen. I, I, I hate the fine. I hate the $75,000 fine, especially when you use it pr to promote everything NASCAR does everywhere. I think, in, in my opinion, I think they should be punished. I think there should be something. But, like, have him go to the back of the longest line. You know, if if Ricky, if you want to punish Ricky Stenhouse and, and Kyle Busch, if you want to punish them both, I would say when they qualify, Coca-Cola 600s this weekend. When they qualify, doesn't matter. Both of you go to the back. Um, or or you, you give them a black flag penalty in the middle of a race. I don't know. Something like that. Like, something I, that's not terribly serious. But no. <laughs> here's, where you get your, here's where you get your fine money from. Yeah. Your, your partner... With Dana White. Okay. You get some money from Dana White. Okay. Anytime there is a physical altercation, immediately thereafter, you get a sanctioned bout at a <laughs> UFC fight. I like it. For 90 seconds. I like it. Under the law. Yeah. Sanctioned. A minute and a half. Whole, you do the whole way. Yep. You get 90 seconds. Go. Get your butts in there. Taped up, ready to go. You got 90 seconds, and we're going to stop this. But you're going to work it out. Everybody on earth would watch that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I would I would, I would buy a pay-per-view to see two NASCAR guys <laughs> in a cage. So No and, rules. No rules. No ref. Just a time limit. It is a fight. The, go. The only, the only saving grace, I think, that NASCAR has from the $75,000 fine, and, and the reason I am not – I'm mad. I'm, I'm mad. I'm not irate. The only saving grace NASCAR really has is, do you know where all their fines go? Charity? Yeah, it goes to the NASCAR uh, so charity. What? Make a donation. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't care. Like, I, I, the NFL does it. The NFL will tweet out and, and put on all their social media. Highlight films yeah. of multiple, multiple CTE-type hits. And then turn around and, fi and find the guys that they're using do it. their action that got fined to promote their league do you remember when madden used used to be able to knock people's helmets off in madden uh yeah coming you, back for ncaa i hear do you know the N nfl told them they had to take that out of the game because it was too violent apparently it's in ncaa oh, i'm so excited we're gonna have a whole ncaa podcast uh and maybe next month maybe in june we well, should do it as a as a as a twitch stream we should play i like it I have a job now. I can buy the game. I have a job now. <laughs> hey, well, well now, go, that you, now that you have I a job. Buy NCAA. Would you? Watermelons. Well, yeah. Screw yeah. you, Monsanto. Screw you, Monsanto. The hell's Monsanto? That's the idiots who change, who, who do all the chemicals and the seeds, and they're in charge of all of our food supply, and, and they're, the, they're oh. the ginormous company that's killing us all because of their- the food supply stuff? The way, because of the way chemicals. that they change- seeds oh. to make them more profitable. Oh, like seed mutation company type deal. They're the reason that watermelons don't taste like watermelons anymore. Well. That tomatoes don't taste like tomatoes anymore. Yeah, yeah. I bought a watermelon. My kid, who, who hasn't eaten in three weeks, wanted a watermelon. I went and got her a watermelon. I cut it up. It tasted like air. Well, it's not she watermelon season it. yet. You got to wait a little no. bit. Got to no. wait a little bit. No. No, Bryce. <laughs> they don't taste like watermelons anymore. <laughs> <laughs> tomatoes don't taste like tomatoes anymore. Yeah. Our kids have no idea what fruits and vegetables actually taste like. Key Farms, thank God. Allison Key, she's got her far Key Farms. I went and bought a gallon of strawberries. They were the best strawberries I've had in 10 years. Yep. They taste like strawberries. They're yep. been grown out there in cow manure probably. The way God intended. <laughs> that's that's how it's and, that's uh, dude. That's one of the things we are blessed with here in West Georgia is all the local farms and how good their produce and everything is. And there there's a there's a uh, produce stand that comes to the Villarica Market every Monday, and I don't remember their name. I'll have to look it up. I'll, I'll post it somewhere. I'll look it up. But they do they do peaches, they do tomatoes, they do okra, they do watermelon. It's the best stuff you've ever had in your entire life. And Ithaca beef is up there as well. And peas don't taste like the dirt anymore. Oh man, it's so good. I hate I hate buying produce from the store, and I I refuse to buy awful. it from Walmart because it's awful. 
It's it's. T- I hate so, Walmart, man. I cannot we, stand that place. We've got two sponsors of HSM that that have local cow farms. O'Neill uh, Cattle Company. O'Neill Cattle Company, mm-hmm. and then and then uh, the Key Farms. Mm-hmm. Allison Key from Three Sixteen. Mm-hmm. And you can go to Key Farms in Bremen or to the Mercantile in Carrollton, and they sell. It's all grass fed, probably grain finished, because I've had some mistakes. And everybody's like, I want grass fed beef, grass fed beef, grass fed beef. That's great. Grass fed beef doesn't have any fat in it. What you want is grass fed grain finished. Yeah. You want That's a little bit want. of that fat. Yeah, because that that it gets them some fat on the end. But she sells because I live in a family of women. And one of them is a pescatarian who doesn't eat red meat. And the other one is a 13-year-old girl who eats a lot of spinach quesadillas. And I am a carnivore. Yep. She sells individually wrapped cryo fro- cryovac packaging steaks. Like, and so I go and just look for sales. And she had a, a buy one, get one free sirloins, which is Ooh. sirloins top two steaks for me. That, I that's what we a sirloin guy. Yeah, that's what we're love sirloin it. guys. Yeah. Love it. Mm-hmm. That's what I was raised on. We we're broke. Yeah. We're son of a butcher. We ate a lot of big sirloin. I don't, I've maybe so, had a New York strip maybe three times never. in my entire life. Hate them. It's the most overrated them. piece of meat on God's earth. I would rather cut a steak out of a chuck roast and cook it than eat a New York strip. I will never understand. I will never understand the hype behind a New York strip. When someone tells me their favorite steak is a New York strip, I think they're an alien. Mine's I think a sirloin. Body snacks. I think you've never eaten a steak in your life. You saw that on Sex in the City. <laughs> the yeah, best like part. Show of a steak is the fat. Yep. It's what makes it delicious. Fa- oh, the can fat. you say that? Can you say that one more time for my wife? One more time. The What's the best part of the steak? steak? Is the fat. That's what I'm talking about. Grain finished. You got to yep. get fat and marbling. The reason that A5 Wagyu costs so much is there's so much daggum fat in it. It's all fat. It's like 90% it's fat. fat. <laughs> but 90% of the fat on a New York strip is inedible. Yeah. You could string your bow with it and shoot another cow. <laughs> it is that tough. You can't eat it. Now, the fat around the outside of a sirloin make you want to slap your mama. You cook that right. And we all know a ribeye's packed full of fat. If you don't like the fat, you don't want the fat, you get a filet. I get it. Or you get a sirloin and don't eat the fat around the outside. You're good. But a New York strip, and, and for a New York strip to be so close on the body of that animal to the filet mignon yep. and to be that crappy, I don't under. I think it's God's litmus test of if you're an idiot or not. That's why He put that New York strip in there was to was to to, to sort out which one of you actually like beef and which one of you just read a book on it. Because <laughs> the New York strip, I don't get it. I, the only time I eat strips is often. Listen to me, people. I am the son of a butcher. I am a son of the greatest butcher that's ever walked this earth. I know things. Often, often. Often in this area, I will walk in and see a seven ninety nine a pound porterhouses, and you look through them. And so a porterhouse or a T bone steak, ladies and gentlemen, T bone, right? Mm-hmm. One side of it, the big side, that is a New York strip. The other side of it, that is a filet mignon. So if you, I, I just go to the butcher shelf and I just start looking through them because my wife likes a fillet. If she's gonna eat red meat, she wants a fillet because she hates fat. She mm-hmm. does. She does not want to eat the fat. same as Emily. Fine. That's fine. I get it. So she cuts if it you're off. I can do eat that. It. Get the tender. Right. Get the get the king of no fat. The fillet. Yeah. I, I like a fillet. I, no, I, no I, I get the, I get the sirloin because she cuts off the fat and then I get to eat it. Yeah, baby. It's my favorite so, part of the steak. <laughs> so. You go and you find the one that's got the biggest fillet on it, and you find a couple with big, pretty fillets, and now you're paying eight dollars a pound for that fillet instead of twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah. And in that scenario, I cut it off the bone. I'll cook her fillet and the kid too. They get a fillet, and now I've got two strips sitting there. Bingo. And I'll suck it up, and I'll marinate the heck out of them, and I'll cook it, and I'll make a steak sandwich. I'll eat it with steak and eggs. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. I save a ton of money and get to feed my girls. They don't ever want it. So when they, I, and I'll and I'll eat it. That's the only time I eat a New York strip. The only time I, th- I, I think eat a New I've York had strip. it. I've had it three times in my life, and all three times were at a restaurant when I was away on business. And it was like one was at one was at a I think one or two were at a Ruth's Chris, and the other one was at a um, McCormick and Schmitz, I think. Um, but it was it was like a business 
It's like a business dinner. And st- I, I'm not, dude. When I go away on business, I'm not. I'm not that type of person, man. I try to find the hole in the walls because yeah, that's too. that's what I. Dude, I'm a dive bar, dude. You know what I mean? Like I'm not. I'm not a highfalutin, expensive. I'm a dive bar, dude. That's that's where I'm most at home at a place like Sissy's. That's where I'm most Bruce at home. Chris is the most overpriced, overrated steak, and it's a broiled steak in butter. That I've only they been give there twice. you the fajita treatment on, so it's sizzling when it comes out and makes you excited. Yeah. It is a broiled steak in butter. It I, is. I don't. I'll never understand Rooster Chris. Uh, but I'll yeah. say this about what you said about business trips. Yeah. Uh, my favorite place to go back when I was traveling for work was to Miami, South Florida. Mm-hmm. Had a bunch of awesome customers down there. But the reason I love going down there is because I love Cuban food. Oh, the best. Love so good. Cuban so good. food. And my broker down there was Cuban. He was an American born Cuban American, but both of his parents were from the island. They they, you know, fled yeah, immigrated Castro, over here. Came to, came yeah. to South Florida. And so his name was Sergio Romero. I love Sergio. Love Sergio. A lot of, and lot his, of flair his instructions in that name. were pick me up at the airport and then immediately take me somewhere where I can't understand them and they can't understand me. Yep. It's the best ones. And and every time we would walk through 10 different sets of old dudes playing dominoes as we were walking into the restaurant. I'd sit down and I'd say, I'd tell him, tell her to bring me whatever she wants to bring me. Yep. And and it always worked out. Dealer's choice. Dealer's choice. Yep. One time I got a whole snapper. She brought me an entire snapper. Jesus. That was a lunch. <laughs> then they give you that rocket fuel they call coffee at the end in a thumb thumbnail. Don't oh drink more God. than this. Dude, no, that- you'll be awake for a week. Yeah. Yeah, you'll be buzzing. The uh, gallon with a gallon of sugar in it. All right. What is your happy thing? My happy thing. Are we already there? Uh, we're about an hour in. Yeah. Wow, man. This is yeah. flowing. This, this is flowing. And the only reason I know I'd keep going, but I got a meeting in 24 minutes. So my happy thing. <laughs> um during the dance party last night, my kid announces I was looking at things, mom, and I I was dancing with glasses on, so I was just listening. I was looking at it, Mom, and uh, I think that I would rather go to 1993 Lollapalooza instead of 1992. Oh, okay. That was a sentence that came out of my 13-year-old's mouth, unprompted. 1993 instead of 1992? She has a 1992 Lollapalooza T-shirt that she wears to bed and wears to school. That is a real one. That right. came from 1992 Lollapalooza. It's my wife's T-shirt. Okay. Right? And that... And so we started look. So I was like, okay, this is going to be fun. Let's find out. And so we looked it up. So I wanted to ask you, mm-hmm. first off, there's no greater conversation for me to have with my 13 year old than that one. Like that was just, hold on. Oh, I may have been body snatched. All my sneezes come in twos and there was only one there. Uh Oh yeah. I may be an alien. So maybe this may not be Casey you're talking to. I very, very, very rarely sneeze one time. <laughs> so uh, we went through the list. Do you have the list there? I do. Yes, I have the uh, list give here. Give me the bands that you've never heard of. Leave them off. There's okay. a ton. Okay. Uh, give me the big ones. So 92. You want 92. All right. The big ones in 92. Pearl Jam. Uh, Pearl Jam was there. Yep. Uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Ice Cube. Mm-hmm. Soundgarden. Ministry. Uh... Ministry was there. Ministry. Um, who else is, uh, was Cypress Hill was there? I'm a big Cypress. 92? Yeah. 92. Oh, yeah. They didn't make the list last night. Yeah. Cypress Hill was there. Uh, from what I'm reading on here, uh, Cypress Hill was there. House of Pain was there. Oh, wow. Uh, Rage Against the Machine. Rage was there 92 and 93. Yep. Way down the list. You Way down the, the list. Yeah. Way down. Nobody knew who they were. Uh, STP was there. Temple of the Dog, Tool. Wait, STP and Temple of the Dog? Yep. Were there in 92. So you had Temple of the Dog and Pearl Jam. Makes sense. Yep. Yep. STP um, and Tool. Tool was there. In 92 or 93? 92. This is all This is all the 92. This is all the 92. Now, these guys are side stage way down the list. 92. Where was Tool in 93? Was Tool on the 93 show? Tool was in the 93 show main stage. Right. So, so two, from two, 92, 92, three people figured out who two was. Right, right. Um, which means, listen, that's important. Yeah. Which means you probably in 92 got a tool concert. And in 93, 
you got a tool show. Yeah, yeah. And so those are two really different things. So Main Stage 92, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Ministry, Ice Cube, Soundgarden, the Jesus and Mary chain, Pearl Jam, and Lush. That was the main stage. That's her T-shirt. Yeah. Those are the exact ones that are on her T-shirt. Yeah. Um, so honestly, 90, side so stage it's interesting in this main to stage. see how they move up. Right? Yeah. So to see how they move up. So 93 main stage. We'll just go main stage on 93. Okay. Uh, Alice in Chains. Mm. Um, Arrested Development. Uh, Babes in Toyland. Dinosaur Jr. Fishbone. Front 242, Mercury Ray, Primus. I love Primus. Big fan of Primus. Uh, Rage and Tool. Those right, were so those were the main stage in 93. I, I'm, I'm all in on 92. Like, I'm all in on 92. Now, the wife made, the, my wife, th this is, you know, she's a little bit older than me. Yeah. And so she was already in high school. I was in middle school. Um, and, and she was a big, big fan of Front 242. That was one of her favorite bands. I've never heard so of that's that. Th that matters for her. Yeah. Um, my kid would love Primus. Oh, my Primus kid would love. So she's probably never heard Primus. She would oh. love. Primus. My kid is a banger. Primus is banger. Primus is awesome, man. Primus is. I showed. I showed her in Living Color, not the show, the <laughs> band. Oh yeah, yeah. Show, last night, this is what we we're doing. I'm showing her videos, and I was like, "Look at this." She goes, "What is this?" Goes, First, we're listening, and she's like, "No, no, 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 yeah." This is good, Dad. This is good. And I turned it around and showed it to her, and she went. <gasps> I said, it's a bunch of black dudes with dreadlocks dressed like 1988 WWE wrestlers <laughs> playing legit metal. She said, that's the greatest thing ever. It's amazing. Like, I, I just knew when I was when they were listing off names, because they were at one of them. And I was like, oh, she's never seen In Living Color. We got to show her this band. Like, she loves loves the music from the 90s that's what has, she digs has but she, for me Allison chains is a loss that you're not getting in 92 right. Allison chains is a monster band they're a monster yeah yeah monster band but in primus <laughs> it, other it, than that if it, you're getting if i'm getting temple of the dog yeah and pearl jam and stp and house of pain cypress hill and ice cube like you're getting three pretty good rap groups in there as well right uh, my wife told me in the middle of all this that she went to Tabernacle. Ooh, that was, what's up? What a, what a venue. Hold on. That she saw at Tabernacle. Now, I don't know if it was Heaven, Hell, Purgatory, which level yeah. they were on. Same night. Same night. She's, and I need to look this up because she was like, it was either this band or this band. But she feels pretty sure that she saw uh, Smashing Pumpkins at Tabernacle. With Soundgarden on a different level. Oh my God! And maybe Jesus and Mary Train or somebody else on the on the third level that wow. were all three monster bands. That's like, insane. Dude. Playing in a playing in a school gym in a high school gym, basically like that small of a venue. Could you imagine the sound from a Smashing Pumpkin show in a thousand square foot room? Yeah, I saw I a band that you probably never heard of, MGMT. Um, they're an electro no, band. No. Uh, I, I saw yeah. them at the tabernacle and it was, Hey, have you gotten, have, have you gotten your daughter? Has she ever listened to ska? Has she ever gotten into ska music? Turn you know, on, there is a ska element to some of the stuff we listen turn to. Turn on some real not, big fish. Not straight ska. Like we've listened to a lot of no doubt. Okay. Okay. That's a little like, ska. No doubt it's is, a, is ska. legit heavy ska yeah. influence. Yeah. Um, her, her teachers give her a hard time. Because uh, she inherited her father's love of the Counting Crows. Okay. And I think Carson Cook's the one that beats her up. Maybe uh, Coach John Cox, too. Uh, she's been so lucky this year, man. I'm so blessed, the teachers that she's gotten. And a lot of them just men. Like, men teachers that have really changed my kid's life yeah. this year. Yeah. Carson Cook, Coach John Cox, Mr. Bass, her, her uh, band teacher, Matthew Bass, and then uh, her Mr. Sweeney, her chorus teacher. Just awesome guys who have really had an effect on her. But they are busting her case about uh, what genre of music she is counting crows. Yeah. Which is a, uh, it's a, it's a yeah, fun. Yeah, see, I can't. It's a fun mental experience. They're, and I told her, I was like, they're folk rock. Never That's got into are. them. They, they play folk rock. Yeah. And then that led into my wife going, uh, you know who else is folk rock, who I'd call folk rock? And I said, who? And she said, uh, oh, gosh, dang it. Um uh, Dad gummit. 
I'll think of it before we're done. All right. But another band that we hadn't let, that she hadn't heard, that we got to play for, and she's like, "Oh my god, that's amazing!" Yeah, get it. play her some play her some real big fish. See if she can see if she real can big get fish? into that. Yeah, real big fish. That's probably my favorite ska band of all time. Uh, she she would dig that. She likes the horns. Yeah. Oh, it's pretty by cool. the way, seventh grade woodwind of the year. Look at that. That's awesome. Woodwind of the year. Hell yeah! Great. I don't that's pretty cool. My history here, and I can tell you, Violent Films. Violent Films. I've never even heard of them. You've heard Violent Films. Maybe. I might Dude, have heard some of their music. You, you absolutely know Violent Films. Violent Films. films. Hmm. I'll have to check that out. Um, Are you kidding? Like, it's furniture business. You, you, you absolutely have heard Violent Films. We may get canceled for this off of YouTube, but. I can't hear anything. It's not coming through on the mic. On the There's no way it's not coming through. No, I can't hear anything on the mic. <laughs> and I'm a walk and I strut my style. Oh, and I'm oh so, yeah. So that, okay. Okay. I'm okay. High yeah. Kind of just yeah. Stuff I've heard. I've heard of them. Yeah. Yep. And Debbie called that folk rock, which I thought was interesting, and was like, "Yeah, what well, that that fits." Yeah. Yeah. To me, folk music is a is a storytelling, right? It's yep. a Bob Dylan was folk whatever but then you got a rock element with the guitars and, and so to me counting crows and the violent films fit into that folk rock category and that's i'm a folk rock I hate bob dylan bob dylan terrible bob terrible dylan singer, and bruce springsteen best. are like two of the guys that are popular that i just absolutely hate just cannot they're get both amazing songwriters yeah terrible singers springsteen's <sighs> way up there with your boy good god i hate bruce springsteen almost Thunder almost Road, as much as dave maybe matthews my band song. Dave Matthews Band, Bruce Springsteen, Bob Dylan, they're all in that same radio off. Radio I have a off. friend that violently hates the Dave Matthews Bleh. Band. Yeah, I can't do it. Can't do the douche, can't do the douche rock. Don't like it. Can't can't get into <laughs> it. Um uh my happy thing. It's almost summer. Pool opens up this week. You know I'm a summer dude. Our neighborhood Mine's open. Our, Come over. Our, our, our I almost did last night. I almost did last night. You should have, brother. We um, had a good time. Our neighborhood pool opens up this week, man. Memorial Day weekends this weekend. It, it means summer's finally kicking off. Kids are out of school. Summer's my favorite time of the year. Uh, we got two beautiful months of sun and pool weather. We're playing baseball a little bit, but you know, it's we're only we're only doing three tournaments, so we're not playing all summer. It's not it's not a travel team. It's an all star team. We're just gonna play in a few tournaments, and once we're done, we're done. Gonna enjoy the summer, uh, and I can't wait, man. I am so jacked up. Our Who's, sponsor's calling. Oh, she, I, ears were burning. Should we answer it? Yeah, answer it live on air. We're gonna answer it live on air. We'll do it live. You you are live on air with Bass and the Bear. Welcome into the studio, sponsored by Marine South. Are we live right now? Live, we are live we are right, right now, live, baby. Live to tape. Buddy. In living color. This is so well, we're doing a record right now. Right yeah. now. Yeah. Hello, everyone. <laughs> What's the topic for today? We were actually wrapping it up. We were talking about how much we love summertime. I'm out on that conversation. Uh, we had a conversation about fist fights at NASCAR, and and uh, my solution was that they shouldn't find them. They should uh, set them up with a 90 second, spo- uh, Dana White sponsored UFC thing. cage fight every time they do it. Do what we used to do when we were kids is they get the boxing gloves out and actually sanction like three one minute rounds, let them get it out of their system. My thing was if you don't break it up quickly, they'll quit fighting. They're too old. At some point, yes, they will quit fighting. Um, but back to your, back to your summer conversation, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a summer fan, right? Right. Although my livelihood depends on people enjoying the summer weather. That's very it's true. true. <laughs> That's true. Personally, though, I prefer to be outdoors when it's cold. Because yeah. I can always put clothes on and get caught. But when it's hot, you can't get taken so many off. You know what I mean? Listen, nobody gets nobody gets trolled more than Casey Bass in cold football season when I didn't bring enough clothes by Clay Harden because Clay is always prepared. And when I get cold, I am not useful. I'm always either. bundled up, baby. Always bundled well, up. The problem with you is you show up, it's 30 degrees, you show up with one hoodie and flip-flops. <laughs> and shorts, probably. It's not wrong. <laughs> it's, it's spot on. 
And that's, that's never a good conversation. I never, never a good uh, combination. I'm developing <laughs> mental toughness, Clay. Well, your feet freezing and getting frostbite on your toes is not developing mental toughness. You're like Adam Sandler from uh, Mr. Deeds. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could hear Bryce in this conversation. He said, oh, "Yeah, I forgot you couldn't hear him." He just said it was like Adam Sandler in Mr. Deeds, the frostbite toe. It's a, it's a, this is a two-sided conversation between three people. Well, that's a lot, <laughs> like a lot of our com- a lot of our conversations yeah. at HSM. Hey, we're gonna wrap this up. I'll call you right back, buddy. I love you. See you, Bryce. See you, bud. He said you suck, and he doesn't even <laughs> like you. That's what Bryce said. <laughs> <laughs> oh that was man fun. call it in yeah calling in for yeah, the sponsors that's they our first it. caller they knew it yeah we gotta set, i gotta set that up at some point we're gonna we're gonna set that up or we're gonna have a hotline we will we calling will make in live that on the marine south hotline make that for sure what's, happen. Marine, what's marine south oh man all right you got any uh you got any final thoughts for us today sea bass uh no i was just looking around to see if i had a show and tell i, I don't Maybe have any show and tell today crazy stuff in here but uh i don't have any oh, show and tell today Oh, this right here, I used it in a job interview. This is, do you know that I collect presidential biographies? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Yeah. And and autobiographies. Uh, This is a a, a book written by George Washington when he was, I think, 15 years old. Oh, wow. And published. Cool. And it's called George Washington's Rules of Civility and Decent Behavior in Company and Conversation. So anytime you think about one of the manliest men to ever man in America was George Washington, you pick this book up. And I'm just going to open the book. Wash Georgington. Um, When in company, put not your hands to any part of the body, not usually discovered. So I can't put my finger up my butt when I'm meeting with people? Show nothing to your friend that may affright them. Who wants to be buddies with a dude who's not going to moon you? (laughs) George Washington was a pansy. Uh, (laughs) affright them so i gotta keep the zombies in my closet that's what he's telling me (laughs) just keep them in there got settle down in there fellas i don't want to fright nobody (laughs) that's all it is it's just a it's a numbered list of rules for being a good decent gentleman good gentleman when i think we both need to read that we got to become good gentlemen benjamin that's pretty cool I, i don't have anything for show and tell um i'll have something next week I'll pull. I'll pull something. I'll pull a rabbit out of the hat somewhere. Uh, for I do. I do actually have two show and tell things, but I think they're both in my wife's car. So that'll be for next week. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't have anything else for this week. Remember, like, comment, subscribe anywhere you're listening. Please check us out on YouTube. Uh, we are on SoundCloud. We're on Spotify. We're on iTunes. We're everywhere. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Everything we do, everywhere we are. It is sponsored by Marine South. Here on TM5's Bro Therapy. Until next week, have a wonderful, safe weekend. Don't do anything I wouldn't do, folks. And remember, fins up. Love you, mean it. Just start getting my catchphrase in, too, jackass.